Welcome back to the Art of Boat Building. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made the sail covers for my boat Skylark. So let me show you how I did that. So to get started with my sail cover project, I first went to Sailrite's website and looked to see if they had a sail kit that would be appropriate for my boat. Well, they have a lot of sail kits there, but they're mostly throated sails, and also they are longer than I needed. Most of them, the shortest they had were 16 feet, and my boom is only 13 feet. So they also do not sail <laughs> they do not also sell a sail cover kit for jib. So it turned out after a discussion with one of their customer service people is that it would be better if I just made my own patterns. So she had suggested that I buy this book that they sell and it was pretty inexpensive, I think maybe $5 or so, on instructions on how to make sail covers. So with this book, there's lots of information in here about how to put the sail together and measure for it. So in the book, it shows how to determine the pattern and dimensions for a non-throated sail, which is what I needed. Now, a throated sail looks like this. It comes up uh, higher onto the mast. So my cover then, it shows how um, to determine some of the uh, sizes and also it describes how to make uh, double hems and where those need to be and making a slit and so forth. So it also shows how to install these twist lock fasteners which I did use for uh, my sail covers. So with that knowledge I then got some plastic sheathing and cut it down and I used that to wrap the sail cover, to, to wrap the sails and, and make a pattern for the sail covers. So I've got my two patterns all laid out here. Uh, this one is for the main sail and then I have the one for the jib. Now at the mast the width of the fabric needs to be 36 inches and at the aft end it needs to be 24 inches. I also have located where the lazy jacks need to go and lazy jacks are slits so the gaff bridle can fit through the sail cover. So the next thing I need to do now is to lay out my fabric and to get it cut to this shape. The fabric that I'm using is a sombrella and I've got the color that I picked is linen and this particular one comes in their premium fabric which is 60 inches wide. The standard colors come 46 inches wide, and if that was the case, I would have to sew two pieces together. But since this is 60 inches wide, I'll be able to get the main sail cover out of one piece. So I've got my pattern laid out on my fabric right now, and what I need to do from my seam here, I need to add three inches. So and the reason for that is to get a double hem. So I took this little sample here and you can see I've got that three inches. So what that will do is the first layer will go like this and then another one like that. And that's how I'll get a double hem there. It needs to be a double hem in order to hold the button fasteners that go in here. So this is basically what that will look like, like that. So I also to finish the back end, I need to add two inches because this is where the finish edge will be like this. So that's my first step is to go along and to mark an additional three inches to that line. I'm using Sailrite's edge a hot knife to cut the fabric. The thing about the, this polyester fabric is that it will unravel very easily. So with a hot knife, it seals that edge nicely. This uh, knife heats up in six seconds once you pull the trigger. And what I've done is then got it hot and that about every couple of seconds, I give the trigger a tap and it keeps it a nice consistent temperature. So 
Another nice thing is that with this concrete floor, I can cut right on it. Typically, you would neither need glass or metal to do that. You see, it makes a really nice clean cut then. I used a two inch wide guide to mark off a line that would indicate where the first fold needed to go to. I used basting tape to hold the first and second fold. Using my seam rubber, I was able to get a nice clean crisp edge on the edge of the fabric. I've got the sail all laid out here on the gaff and main boom and so I can see that it's the length is proper. Uh, I clamped it a little bit on the uh, front there where the mast will be uh, so I can kind of figure out how to uh, taper that. Um, the other thing I wanted to make sure is where these um, gaff bridles come through if they match up with the marks that I made, and it looks like they do. So I think I'm in good shape there. Um, so I'm going to uh, take it back off and then cut my lazy jack slots here, and then also figure out the front here around the mast. So this is what I worked out here. Uh, this spot right here is where the tang for the gaff comes out. So I'm going to make a straight slit here and then taper it out like so and see how that is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I may have to cut more off, um, but I'm going to do this first and see how it fits. It appears to fit pretty good. I've got it clamped at the bottom and also in the front here. Um, so I think that'll go around the mast pretty well. Uh, the mast is, you can see where the gaff jaw is, so it's not any bigger than that. Um, now this edge gets dressed with this binding tape like this, so I may just make this a little bit bigger so that that'll lay in there nicely. Um, Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. With the cover laid over the gaff, I double checked the location for those lazy jacks. So now I've got it laid out here. So this is the center of the cover, and I've measured over four inches. So I've made sort of a T here. So my next step is to take my hot knife and to cut that T out. Now I've got the back side of the cover showing right now. So my next step now is to, on the slit, is to put a binding on the fore edge and a reinforcement patch on the aft edge. And the reinforcement patch will be there when we put our snaps in there so that it has more than one piece of fabric to go through. 
Now, if you're interested in the full procedure of how to make a lazy jack, the sale right has a really good video, about a 30 minute video on doing it. And I'm linking it here so that if you'd like to watch the full thing, you can. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get these two, um, the binding and the reinforcement patch sailed, <laughs> sewn onto the main cover. These leather reinforcements go on both sides here of the slit. And basically what we want to do is to split the center of it and uh, center it this way so that then we'll put this leather patch on there and then we'll cut that T back in there. And then this one will go on the inside of the sail cover. So I've got the patches on both sides now, and now it's a matter of stitching all the way around the perimeter of it. And um, I'm going to try it on my machine, and if that doesn't go very well, then I'll hand stitch it. Using the sewing machine worked great. And while I was at it, I added a leather reinforcement patch to the gaffed tang slit. Well, now that I've got those leathers all attached on there, the next step is to make an access flap that goes on here. So I've already made the flap. So it has got a double hem all around the perimeter out here like this. And this is a single hem that will get attached right here with a row of stitching. Now this will get some fasteners in here that lock it in there. And those fasteners are designed to go through about three or four layers of material. So I was concerned that it would get too thick in the end. So I devised this little cutting it on a 45 um, with my hot knife. Now they make fasteners that are for thicker material, but I did not purchase those. So I think this should work just fine that I'll be able to then sew this and then I'll put three twist lock fasteners on here to make that closure work. So that's the next step is to get this sewn on there. So my next step now is to attach these twist lock fasteners. So we've got uh, an eyelet here and it gets a washer on the back side. And then this is the uh, twist lock stud and it goes through this and then it will lock in place like so. Um, now to install these, there are a couple of things. There's a tool that is made in order to stamp a hole in here that is oval like that and little spots uh, for these uh, tabs to go through. Uh, what I've decided was not to buy one because they're um, $60. And so what I did is I made a little paper template like this that I'm going to lay on here like so and mark that out. Now first I want to put my got a little rubber stamping thing here I'm going to put underneath there and get that positioned properly. So I'm going to mark out the center here where I need to cut a hole 
And then the other thing I did is I took an old screwdriver and I sharpened the tip so that it's basically razor sharp. And it's actually sharp enough that I can just press on there and cut right through it. So I'm going to do that on those four spots. Now, in order to cut that hole, I have a set of um, fabric hole drills, drill bits. So I need to use the, this one here, which is about the right size. I'm going to cut two holes in there. So you can see I've made sort of a whole oval hole in there now. Now this eyelet should get it lined up with those holes I punched. Go right in like that. Now on the back side here, there's a little washer that goes on there. And then those can just be bent over. So there I've got my little eyelet in there. So the next piece is then to put the stud in there. And so what we'll do is get this lined up where it needs to be, like that. And hold that on there so it doesn't move. And mark these two little holes. And then I take this little 1 8 inch uh, hole drill and drill those. And then those get these little studs that go from the back side. So we'll take the stud and put it through. And the one goes on the top side. And then the stud goes on top of there. Now I've got this small uh, punch that goes on there. And I need, and we put this little disc underneath there and then we punch that on there. And that fastens that on there. And then this comes over and snaps on there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these, um, about three of them on each flap. Now that I've got all of the twist locks there on those enclosure flaps, I need to put them all along the edges here. So on one side will be the eyelets and the other side will be the twist studs. So I'm going to put them along here about every 16 to 18 inches. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. And once that's all done, we can get working on the jib.
So you can see I've got my jib pattern all laid out here on my remaining material. Now, what I need to do is I, I need to make two of these so that they'll be sewn together for the two halves. So at the bottom, I need to have a three inch border going around so I can put a double hem in it. I need to do the same here where it goes along the fourth stay. I need to put a three inch hem. And then here, I need to do a three quarter inch um, salvage edge that I can then fold over and double stitch on there. So I'm gonna lay this out and get it all cut out. And then I'm gonna use that as the pattern for the other side. So I've got my two halves all cut out now. Uh, what I need to do next is put a double hem here on the bottom of each piece and also along the leading edge. So I'll get that done next and then we'll see about joining them together. I've got that stitched, I need to open this seam up. And so I need to take this basting tape out of there. So I won't need it anymore. So now what I want to do is I want this fold to fold on this side this way and that on the other way. So what I'm going to do now is to put some basting tape along there. And then as I get to this curve, I'm going to make some little slits in that every so often so it'll lay in there nice and flat. And now that I've got the other side basted, what I need to do now is to turn it right side out like this. And then I need to run a stitch, one on each side here, that'll catch that little uh, seam allowance that's on the other side. So you can see how that top seam went, came, up, came together there. And so now this edge here will flip over and that's where we'll put our twist locks is along here. Here are the completed sail covers. The only thing left to do now is to see how they fit.
Well, they fit really nicely. Uh, I must say I'm pretty happy with it came out. Uh, I really enjoy sewing projects like this, so I really, really had a good time doing it. This umbrella fabric is really a joy to work with. So that puts us a little closer to the launching. Uh, the launch is uh, just barely a month away now, which will be on June 28th at the Mystic Seaport during the Wooden Boat Show. So I hope that you can all come. The launching will be on Friday and most likely sometime in the afternoon, uh, probably mid-afternoon. Now I'm going to be located near the Oyster House for those of you that are familiar with the Mystic Seaport uh, grounds. Uh, that's the location that I've been in the past. So I'll have a booth set up and in addition to uh, Skylark being there and getting launched, there also will be several members of my boat building boot camp that'll be there with their boats and plans for their boats. So I hope that you can all join us for a big celebration on that weekend on June 28th through the 30th at the Mystic Seaport in Mystic, Connecticut at the Wooden Boat Show. So that's it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching and remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.